I mentioned a really common use case is to be able to load contracts. Uh, within my conf test, I'm going to create a non fixture. I'm just going to create a simple script that's going to load a contract by address. And the reason for this is I'm not sure how other people do this, but if you're running on a very first time, sometimes the contract definition is not imported. So if I run this, I would occasionally get a value error, in which case I can load the contract from the Explorer, which is going to ping Etherscan, get the definition, and then load the contract. But I don't want to do this every time because I might get rate limited. So I don't know how other people do it. I use this all the time. This is going to quickly pull the contract if it exists. Otherwise, then it'll make the expensive API call. Next up, let's create a fixture. And this fixture is going to load the curve registry. Self demo real estate. The registry, as we saw previously, is a great interface to deal with anything curve on the blockchain. This is not going to require anything. All it's going to do is it's going to return using this load contract, the curve registry, which I currently have open in Etherscan. What can I do with this registry? Well, let's now create another fixture. One of the cool properties of fixtures is they can reference other fixtures. So if I would like to create a function that will load the tripool, it can load the tripool. It can call the registry. And within registry, it's simply going to load the contract associated with the registry pool list zero with offset. That's the very first pool, which I happen to know is tripool or three pool. A lot easier to refer to three pool than to have to run that every single time. Let's do a similar one, but this one's going to be the liquidity provider token. When you invest in Curve, you get a token back saying that you invested in a given pool. We would like to be able to take the tri pool and we would like to return the LP token address. That's the equivalent of taking this address here, putting it in this function, and we get back this other helpful token. So far, so good. We've created a few fixtures now. Now let's create the fixture that replicates what we did back in our scripts the other lesson. And here we did a lot. We basically minted some dye. We imported it. We staked it in the gauge. We're not going to repeat everything here just yet, but we will create a fixture that will mint some dye. And we're going to call this try pool funded. And this is going to return a state where our try pool exists and has been funded. We're going to need registry, we're going to need Alice, and we're going to need try pool. So, first up, let's create a mintable fork token. This will require us to run a few imports. And in fact, I uh, was a bit lax on this. We also need to import contract otherwise our from brownie otherwise this is not going to work and from brownie tokens which we installed in the previous unit we want mintable fork token we'll create a die address die happens to be the first coin in tri pool if you didn't know what the exact first coin in tri pool was you could just call this generic first coin and here we're going to call get coins, which is this function up here.
And when you call it on tripool, it's going to return three different coins. We're just going to grab the address from the first one. If you haven't noticed this, you can pass a contract container object and it will resolve as the address. Very helpful. With our address, we will create a mintable fork token. And we will use this to mint an amount. We'll start with 1 times 10 to the 21st. And we'll give tripool approval for the amount signed as Alice. We will mint the token. We'll give Alice the amount she requested. And finally, when we add liquidity, this takes the form of a vector. I happen to know for tripool is three long. So we'll say amount and zero of the other tokens. And finally, we will add liquidity amounts, minimum of zero, and Alice is signing the transaction. Finally, we return tripool. So this is quite a lot going on. Our tests, we will now add this on to integrate this and see if this works as we're hoping. So there are two basic tests we'd like that would be a good sanity check. We'd like to run first before we run this tripool funded function, make sure Alice's balance of the LP token is zero. And then after we funded, we would hope to see Alice's LP balance go up above zero. To begin with, we will test try test try pool initially unfunded because we did so much work setting up our registry. There's a lot less that we need to do here. All we need to do is we need to pull in, in this case, the register, uh, not even the registry. We need to pull in the LP token and we need Alice. And our assertion is simply before we've done anything that the tripool LP token, which is an ERC20 token, therefore has balance of Alice, should be equal to zero. Then by contrast, when we run this again, and we this time we call tripool funded we would fully expect that the balance of alice is no longer zero but has ticked up to some value above zero and so we're ready we should have three tests at this point we only want to run the tests and test curve and let's see what kind of typos i made And we will have to run this on mainnet fork because we're interacting with live curve contracts. Let's see what happens. One, two. I can tell it's going to work. Three tests passed. So now we have an amazingly robust environment. We managed to run these tests and we didn't have to do any work. In the next unit, we're going to go over integrative testing. We're going to use this capability as kind of a hacky way of interacting with several curve contracts at once. Until then, enjoy. Drop your questions in the comments.